have a look at the surroundings and there are no prizes for guessing that we are in the good old US of A. More specifically, we are on the border of Utah and Arizona and we've come here to have a look at the new Land Rover Discovery. Now, we've already driven the prototype version of this car and you can watch that video by clicking on the icon on the top right hand side of your screen. However, this is our first go in the full production car. The Disco has always been popular because not only does it provide all the space and practicality that any family could ever need, it also has the kind of toughness and proper off-roading capability that makes it much more than just a fashion accessory. To look at the latest car, you might wonder whether that's still the case because as you can see, the harsh edges have been softened off and some of the visual boldness has been diluted. And that is why we've come stateside to take the trip that we're just about to take and find out whether the latest car still has the minerals to be a proper disco. So let's saddle up. As with previous versions of the Discovery, there's just one role that this car has to play, but it has to play it really, really well. And that is the role of the luxury cruiser. And so far, that role is being played to absolute perfection. The air suspension is effortlessly absorbing every bump and rut that the road surface can throw at it. So you're just wafted along in absolute comfort. What's more, with previous versions of the Discovery, the front end styling was so upright that it generated a lot of wind noise. And because the shape of this one is so much slipperier, then things are a lot quieter. The 237 brake horsepower, two litre diesel engine in this car helps towards the refinement as well because it's just about smooth enough and quiet enough to keep things civilized. It's not too shy in the performance stakes either because there's about enough grunt to get you up to speed reasonably quickly and reasonably easily. However, that's without the car loaded up and if you stick seven people plus luggage in, then we suspect it might start to struggle a wee bit more. Throw a few corners into the mix and you'll find that the Disco deals with them in a very capable and controlled manner. There's no disguising the sheer hugeness of this car, both in terms of its dimensions and its weight. But to be fair, you'd have to be driving it pretty hard before it starts to feel cumbersome or untidy. And in fairness, why would you do that anyway? No, on the road, this car does exactly what you want a Disco to do. Of course, the way the car behaves on road is only part of the story. To be a proper discovery, it needs to perform just as well off the road. And that's why we've come here to the Coral Sand Dunes State Park. These dunes here are thought to be around 15,000 years old. And because of the way that the sand is shifted around by the wind, each dune is thought to move around 50 feet per year. Much more interesting than all that geology stuff though, is the fact that this place has become something of a playground for off-roading fans. People come from miles around to run their 4x4s, quad bikes, dune buggies over this properly challenging terrain. And that makes this the perfect place to test the Disco's off-roading credentials. Now the Disco's terrain response system has a range of settings according to what sort of a surface you're on. We've got mud and ruts, we've got snow and ice, we've got rocks, we've got sand. No prizes for guessing which one we're in right now. Terrain response then fettles the behaviour of the transmission, the electronic traction aids and the diff locks to help get you out of trouble. Now you'd think that driving a two tonne car on what is essentially a great big mountain made of loose sand would inevitably give you that sinking feeling. But with the Disco, it doesn't. Well, not yet anyway. You can feel the individual wheels slipping and spinning, but then the electrics cut in, sort everything out, and then boom, you are on your way. It feels like you can be as ham-fisted as you like with your technique, but the Disco just keeps on going. After an intense activity like that, it's always nice to unwind a little bit, and that's why we come here to the Amangiri Resort. Like pretty much all luxury resorts, it has a wellness spa, a wide variety of pools to dip in and out of, along with stylish communal areas in which to relax, gourmet restaurants and chilled out bars. What makes this place different though, is the incredible setting. Quite literally, it's an oasis of comfort and luxury hidden away in surroundings that are about as rugged as it's possible to get. In that way, it draws comparison with the Discovery itself. We've seen what it's capable of in the rough stuff, so it's as hardy as they come. But climb in, 
shut the door and things feel instantly luxurious and tranquil. That's to do with the modern design, chic materials, loads of space in all seven seats by the way, and loads of luxury equipment. Granted, it's not perfect because the touchscreen system is a little bit clunky and confusing to operate, but otherwise you will love spending time in here. And what's more, it has enough prestige image to cut it in a swanky joint like this. And that speaks volumes about the car's desirability. But the question remains, should you be buying a Discovery as your next family car? Well, if you do, you probably won't be using it in the same way we have, to traverse rocks, sand dunes, not to mention a pretty sizable portion of Midwestern America. The fact remains though, that whether you live in Richmond, Virginia or Richmond upon Thames, the Discovery will be a hugely satisfying car to own with all the practicality, sophistication and luxury that you could ever want. Speaking of luxury, there is a jacuzzi with my name on it, so if you'll excuse me.